Alrighty then, hello, hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here with the Attack Sports for this Monday, December the 15th, 2014. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I did, especially was full of decent sports news. So let's get to it with the NFL Week 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 15 thoughts and results. Now, let's get on down to a course. I live in Detroit. Of course, you have to be kind of a fan of the Detroit Lions and love them or hate them. But you had to root on the Lions doing their game against the uh, the team known as the Vikings because of what happened during the Packers game. Of course, Packers have been the top team in the NFL NFC North division for the last couple of weeks. But their reign upon the top of the NFC North is threatened. After losing their game against the Buffalo Bills, worst showing for the Packers since week number two. No touchdown passes by Aaron Rodgers. Two interceptions thrown by Aaron Rodgers. Five drop passes, including two by one of Aaron's favorite targets, Jordan Nelson. And a punt return for a TD. And a safety on the same game by Buffalo Bills, causing the Packers to go down 21-13. Losing the former Bears quarterback, Kyle Orton. I think it's kind of Bill's way of thinking Detroit for the Bills and Jets game being at the Lions' home field. Jets is like, I mean, the Bills were like, hey, Detroit, we want to thank you for giving us a home field for our game against the Jets when our field was snowed out. Now we're going to repay you by giving you an opportunity to be in first place in the NFC North since we defeated the Packers again today. So the Lions had the opportunity. As they took on the Minnesota Vikings. Now, there was the new Lions and the old Lions. The new Lions won't let easy teams beat them. Because Lions, when they were the old Lions, when they used to suck really bad, they would, like every time the old Lions would go up against a team they should beat, they blow the game. Like they did against, ironically, Buffalo, but at least they recovered in time. To be in this position of trying to go for first place in the division. But they look like the old Lions again. As it looked like it was going to be another Lions blow, an easy, blow another easy win. As it was 14 zip in the second quarter. Against the Vikings of all teams. But the defense saved the day again. Causing a couple, two interceptions from Teddy Bridgewater. And that's what happened. The defense saved the day again. The offense did nothing much. You know what exceptions look by Stafford, but they couldn't get anything going. They didn't, they didn't even get a first down to the second quarter. That's sad. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't get any first downs for shit. You know what I mean? But, uh, like I said, they said defense in their takeaways. Bang. The Lions got back in the game in the second quarter. At least trailing 14 to 10 instead of 14 to zip. And they're not letting Vikings score again. End of the game. And a nail biter, another heart attack situation. Another nail biter, all the way down to the last seconds. 16 14. Lions win the game, and they got first place position in the NFC North, thanks to the uh, defense again. Offense, get your fucking shit right. They will take on the Bears next week in Chicago. Bears take on the Saints tonight on my night football in New Orleans. Now, other games. Including big game, speaking of NFC, the number one seed could be threatened. As Arizona Cardinals easily won their game, though, it was a slow game against the Rams, but their way on the top may be threatened by Drew Stanton getting injured. First, the starter got injured, cost of Palmer, then the backup got injured. While the Cardinals may be threatening, the Seattle Seahawks are picking up steam as they won their game against Frisco, causing Frisco's embarrassing season. To come to an end. And Jim Harbaugh. Inching very closer. To go out the door. And coach for Michigan. Football. You know U of M. 17-7 against the 49ers. Meanwhile. Despite Peyton Manning. Leaving the game due to a. Flu-like symptom. Peyton Manning returned. Midway towards the second half. To bring the Broncos back. In their game against San Diego. 22-10. Winning that game. And clinching their division. As well as the Pats. Clinching their division. It seems that every year they clinch the division when they play Miami. 
went in there in a 41-13 fashion. And the Browns in their first start with Johnny Menzel. 30 zip against the Bengals. Johnny Bench should be Johnny traded. Anyway, we also had another big playoff contention matchup with the Cowboys beating the Eagles at home. At the Eagles home, getting revenge of the losing at Dallas for Thanksgiving. So 38-27 Cowboys clinching their division. Looking like they're, they're going to clinch it. The NFC East. So they got big playoff contention. We're getting closer to the playoffs, so every every win means everything. So uh, there you go. NFL Week 15 results and thoughts on that. Interesting playoff scenario with a lot of teams going out. You know, Packers losing and the Lions winning, so it's very intense there. So there you go. Now, I'm with some UFC action. Of course, UFC had their fight night on Fox this past week. As uh, Gio Dos Santos took on Stipe Miocic. Now, the card was okay. The first couple matches were kind of okay. Uh, I, saw the, I saw the card on DVR. We had uh, the first match was kind of like a quickie. Quickie matchup. I think it was. Yeah, it was Matt Mitchell against Gabriel Gonzaga. It was like a TKO. Like, Matt Mayfield got a big shot in on Gabriel. That was a decent knockout there to begin the match. Then Alistair Overeem, he hasn't been in a match in a while. And he destroyed Stefan Struve with some punch. It was like a weird knockdown. So the first match was okay. And then the Coleman was basically a three round beatdown. Nate Diaz should be tired. Rubio Dos Anjos just destroyed him on Saturday. Now we did Nate Diaz. Miss Waits walked out of his post fight interview. He claimed he was injured. And he got asked me. Should I, or should I say kicked? Those leg kicks for those onions were so stiff, man. You can see that Nate Diaz wasn't walking by the time he got his 55th leg kick for Rafael. He just got destroyed by him. You can see a big red ball in his knees. And those onions easily won the match. Should have ended in the first or second round, but Rafael. Rafael couldn't finish Nate. Now, I'll give Nate credit for trying to hold on, but he had no offense because his fucking legs were shot after getting leg kicked a million times from Rafael during that fight. Then the main event, Rafael Los Anjos, this former guy, you know, yeah, yeah, he won that fight, the cold main. The main itself, like I said, was Julio Dos Santos against Stipe Miocic. Now, this is Julio Dos Santos' first fight since losing to Cain Velasquez about a year ago. Speaking of guys who may be tired, Junior won the fight, though, but in my mind, Stipe should have won. Because Stipe won the first two rounds, for sure. Because Junior just looked dazed and confused during that fight in the first couple rounds. Like, Junior came alive the last three rounds, but he still looked tired during that fight. He, as Dana White said during his post-fight press conference, that Junior Dos Santos looked like a zombie during that match. He was on autopilot, as some would say. As Junior just tried to fight and survive. It was an okay fight. It was actually a decent fight round war. You know, a lot of blood in there. A couple, couple good shots in there. But still, Dos Santos had no energy. He won. He, he, he survived. You know, barely. But I think I think Dana White said that Junior's not going to fight for a while. He said after that zombie-like performance tonight, even though he won, Junior may be out for a while. That's what Dana White said. So there you go. Let's see what happens there. And all of that good stuff for UFC to get. I think another fight night this Saturday with CB Dalloway against Leona Machina. I'm probably going to DV all that. So, after that UFC, let's get on there with WWE. War tonight. I am going to miss War tonight live because I, I'm in an improv group. I'm, I'm taking live imp improvisational classes. And this is our class show us tonight. So I'm going to miss war tonight. But I'm still going to do my war preview tonight. Live from Detroit. I live in Detroit. It's at the Joe Lewis Arena tonight. The aftermath of TLC. Tables, ladders, and chairs. And stairs. So there you go. Top three questions that must be answered tonight. Question number three. Actually, we have five questions tonight. I will I will do five questions. 
Question number five. We'll go down with your new Intercontinental Champion, Dolph Ziggler. I did not think Harper was going to lose the IC Championship within three weeks, but I'm kind of happy that Dolph Ziggler reclaimed the IC Championship during a very grueling ladder match last night at TLC. Now, with him being champ again, we'll see if he gives Harper a rematch. Probably will, and maybe we lose it again, but who knows. But at least Dolph won in his hometown, so I'm happy to see Dolph as champ again. Question number four. Will AJ retire tonight? Now, it's been rumors about AJ leaving the company, especially with her husband. Sorry, my notifications are going off. Uh, my imp I, like I said, I'm, I'm doing these, this improv show tonight, and all my improv fans are chatting on Facebook right now. We have a message board on Facebook, so we're just chatting up, getting ready for the show tonight. That's why the notifications, the notifications are going up. I apologize. Um, so, AJ... May leave the company, especially with her husband, like I said, CM Punk, is now in UFC, apparently, fighting next year. So, she's been losing a lot to Nikki Bella, losing at Survivor Series, and lost again last night at TLC. We'll see what happens with her down the line. So, there you go. Question number three. What will go down tonight with Chris Jericho as your guest general manager tonight? Since the authority's still out of power, we are going to have... A guest GM again this week. It's not the it's not the guest GM, not the uh, anonymous GM. It's Chris Jericho. So we'll see how he does as GM tonight, filling in in Detroit Rock City this evening. Question number two. What's next for Dean Ambrose? Now he lost to Bray Wyatt in a very grueling and exciting TLC match last night. And the ending kind of got people puzzled. The fact that Dean Ambrose lost because a TV exploded. No matter how the match ended, it was still a very grueling and exciting match. Of great spots in that matchup. If you haven't seen my TLC review, it's on this channel. So check it out. So we'll see what happens with Ambrose's future tonight after losing to Bray Wyatt tonight. Uh, last night. And now, question number one. Will Brock Lesnar show up to... <sighs> Start the hype for Cena Lesnar 3 at the Royal Rumble. And side question, will any other matches be made for the Rumble? Now, a couple things happened to set up for the Rumble. What would Reigns return last night? I need to put that as a question. I should have put that on a question. Yeah, bonus question. What would what would Reigns do tonight? Now, what would Reigns return properly to any action last night? Getting himself involved in the Cena Seth Rollins match at the Big Show got a little bit involved. Coming back with a vengeance, helping Cena put Seth Rollins to a table, and setting up the aforementioned Cena Lesnar 3. So we'll see how Woman Rain, what Woman Reigns does tonight. He'll probably appear tonight, because he came back at TLC last night. Now, like I mentioned, Cena Lesnar 3 is official at the Royal Rumble. Now, I wanted Rollins to win. I said in my World Review last week that I wanted Seth Rollins to win, because I wanted Cena to get Rollins over, and... Cena Lesnar 3 would get cancelled if Cena would have lost. But sadly, it's not going to happen. The cancellation ain't going to happen. Cena Lesnar 3 is official now. There is rumors. I live in Detroit. Like I said, Wall is in Detroit tonight. And they always have local ads for the Walls when they tape here. Local advertisements in Detroit have said that Brock Lesnar is slated to be on Wall tonight. Makes sense. Since Cena won, the hype is going to start for the Royal Rumble. And Woman Reigns is in the Rumble match. So that's two things we found out about the Wumble last night. The Wumble pay-per-view is that the main event is sadly Cena Lesnar 3 for the World Heavyweight, WWE World Heavyweight title. And Woman Reigns is the first guy to be in the Wumble match. And it's 30 guys. Thank God it's not 40 again. Maybe some NXT guys could sneak in there. We'd love to see that. Since NXT is outperforming the main roster by a fucking long shot. Once again, chilling NXT TakeOver. But we'll see what happens on the wall after TLC tonight at 8, 7 Central on USA Network from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan. That is it for the Attack Sports for this day. Thank you all very much for watching. Normally I would say stay tuned for my wall review tonight. But like I said, I'm not watching wall live tonight. Watching a DVR. So there won't be no wall review tonight. But there will be one next week. With that in mind, y'all been attacked by the news, sports news from Zach. See you later. Yeah.